Hello, welcome again to our new episode. Uh, it's morning and I just woke up. Um, I'm checking this car right now and uh, hope you uh, enjoy watching. So I have here a 2006 Toyota Corolla uh, with a check engine light on. Of course, it's not on right now but I'm sure it's going to turn on because according to my scanner there's a fault code. So. Let's check this fault code and hopefully we all learn something. 2006 Toyota Corolla. It's a 1.8 engine. We have a catalyst system efficiency below threshold. Bank 1. P0420. Uh, usually on these cars we, we replace the catalytic if we see those codes. But of course, in this video, I will show you with the helper of our handhold scanner. I will show you how to determine if this is a bad cat or not. So let's go back out. What I'm gonna do is go inside the engine. Very important freeze frame data. Let's see what kind of data it has. Um, It'll tell us when the code was tri triggered, when the fault code was set, um, and maybe sometimes, you know, the answer is always there. So we have fuel system in closed loop, coolant temp 178 degree Fahrenheit, with our short term and long term fuel trims within the specs. Uh, engine speed is 1388 rpm so this is not on idle that I can tell you there you go vehicle speed it's traveling 30 miles per hour when the code got triggered let's see if it's telling us anything else there you go unfortunately that's all it's giving me uh, it would be nice if well one thing we know the car was uh, uh, not stationary when the code was triggered it makes sense because the catalytic converter uh, usually to set the codes on this car the drive pattern that you have to follow is you have to drive the vehicle on a certain speed um, uh, for a certain time frame in a certain certain uh, time frame alright so let's go exit out I'm gonna go to live data live data usually will give us a a more a more detailed um, determining factor so I'm gonna go to custom data because I don't want everything I only wanted what we needed for this type of fault catalyst monitor yeah I haven't driven the car I just started it so I'm sure all those monitors are not set yet oh there you go a fuel system I'm gonna click that select go down coolant temp Engine speed. I like including my um, short term and fuel, uh, long term fuel trims for this kind of test because sometimes uh, it tells me it tells me uh, to determine whether it's not a cat problem. Maybe it's just a sensor that's causing the problem, and the fuel trim usually uh, helps you with that if it's out of spec alright I'm trying I'm taking the O2 sensor bank 1 sensor 2 and the AFS which is air fuel sensor bank 1 sensor 1 on this car you only have two sensors front and back uh, upstream and downstream but it's using a wide band sensor which is the AFS sensor so the value is a little different but 
there's a lot of videos about explaining how a uh, wideband sensor works there you go fuel system is in closed loop which is good we want that to be in closed loop CL not OP or open loop when we're checking so we're in closed loop everything is now active and working coolant temp 180 degrees which is normal engine temperature which is good uh, our short term and long term is like I said it's within specs uh, RPM we're at idle right now uh, mass airflow sensor could very well sometimes cause the problem but with that 1.8 grams per second and jumping to 3 yeah I don't like that reading you know on a 1.8 liter I would love to see my ma gra I mean uh, my mass airflow sensor to be at that range I guess because my AC is on it's jumping because you know extra load but that's a lot of jump though all right I'm gonna go back to that that mass airflow sensor is questionable uh, graphic I like to set my uh, scanner to graphs because I can really see the uh, the live action data of the sensor sometimes numbers it's hard to see the patterns and you know it's too fast when they when they switch but with the graphs you can see right away what's happening so oh no what happened to my AFS sensor hold on guys I thought I switched I clicked it alright let's start over again This time I'm going to skip the other things because um, I already saw my coolant temp and I think we're good at that. I'm just going to get that mass airflow sensor. O2 and air fuel. Okay. Then we're going to go to graph. graphic do graphic there you go all right it's not here again what's going on Forgive me guys, something's not, not working out with me right now. I was so positive that I picked that's a few. See, I did. I picked it. There you go. Now it's there. Man scared me for a minute all right I want to see two graphics or as a matter of fact I want to see all but in this in this scanner it will only allow me to show two at a time so I'm gonna go since that I checked the long term and short term fuel trim I'm gonna skip that now um, and I'm gonna go to O2 sensor bank one sensor two and AFS bank one sensor one I will look at this now on an AFS sensor on on a Toyota usually that sensor reads out and steady at 3.2 uh, volts um, but with this jumping let me turn off my AC let's see what happens here Well, 
that's that 3.2 Yep, at idle, no load. I turned my AC off because um, every time it clicks or it switch on, it's um, adding extra load to the vehicle, making the engine spin faster. But keep an eye on that O2 sensor, bank one sensor two, which is the rear. Um, O2 sensor or rear O2 sensor, if there's nothing wrong with it, that should be your reading. Right there. That's your normal. Now when you see that go up and down, uh, that tells us that on the rear cat, it's not filtering good anymore. And that's why it's So right now we're at idle. Alright, let's check our AF sensor. How to check my AF sensor? Usually I snap the throttle. It should be it should kick high up and down and back to 3.2 so let's snap our throttle see that went to the highest and lowest and then back to 3.2 there and that is good that's a good indication But the O2 sensor, I don't like that O2 sensor on the rear because see how it's it 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 jumps every now and then you get that switching then your AF sensor it, it fluctuates way off. See a normal a normal rear O2 sensor will not do that. Uh, point seven C. Like I said, a normal o o rear O2 sensor, if it's good, it should be steady reading in the middle, uh, not lean reach, lean switching from lean to reach. So that. I think because the reason why sometimes because the customer said sometimes the check engine light stays on and then it turns off by itself uh, while actually driving um, and sometimes it'll come on and stay on so um, at this time it's an intermittent problem it's 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 probably because it's about to go bad but with that like I said with that O2 sensor doing that and the AF sensor it's also going out of range a little so I will I will do recommend the uh, catalytic converter on this and also replace that front AF sensor just because of this this issue right now um, it may not be bad yet it's still good but it's not a hundred percent good so again when you're checking a catalytic converter code um, watch your front sensor and your a uh, uh, your rear O2 sensor and make sure they're all giving you values um, and know what a wideband sensor does and what's the value for your vehicle and O2 sensor is it's basic it's it's 
it's always like this uh, below below one volt you see 0 0.7 it's the highest reading is 0 0.760 volts so this is always below one volt the rear O2 if this goes above one volt then something's not right with that O2 sensor but usually a good O2 sensor on the rear should be steady at idle and will fluctuate as you drive um, depends on the load uh, on the air, a wide bed sensor uh, which is the air fuel sensor uh, it should be on a sto stoichiometric reading which is it should be steady at something which is that's the standard and and uh, it should not be moving kind of off like this but all right well I hope this helps you I have so many explanation already and uh, see all that jumping up and down I don't like that so there you go uh, again I hope that helps you in diagnosing your um, uh, catalytic converter for uh, those codes P0420 or P0430 for a, for a, a V engines uh, like I said make sure you're reading your auto sensor on the rear uh, check the other things too uh, your air fuel ratio sensor um, to determine if your AF sensor may be bad. At this point AF sensor um, may not be bad really bad to determine uh, uh, to determine if it's really bad to replace but I think I think I'm gonna have to replace that too along with the new cat so for both. Uh, there you go uh, I hope you enjoy watching I apologize for the trouble a while ago and uh, thank you. Bye-bye.